Good morning, folks. We've got a comet diving at the sun, space weather analysis, three cool news articles from within our solar system, sort of, and we'll be ignoring that theater playing out on TV for the masses who can't figure out it's just a control mechanism for the populace. Anyway, our arrival at spaceweathernews.com is delayed due to Soho Lasco C3 images showing a comet brightening preposterously fast on approach to the sun. Now, either it just had a breakup, cause for the brightening and will now fade, or it really is a good-sized incomer and is just brightening that fast. We'll be watching and tracking it in today. Heading now to spaceweathernews.com and checking out the last 24 hours on our star, we're finding a lot of calm. No big flashes, couple shifts, definitely no major eruptions. But there were some hours of data missing yesterday, and those happened during the C-class solar flare. Now, it wasn't too scary, and it erupted at the departing group, which is just hours from leaving a blank disk facing Earth. The Proba 2 was watching and uninterrupted. Oddly, even with most SDO images missing, the 171 was active and caught the little blip, and so did Go's SXI. The solar wind appears in flux, but over on the left side, the scale, it's really just minor shifts, leaving geospace mostly quiet, and the KP index nicely in the safe zone there. Let's go to our top stories. We begin with an object that is part of our solar system, but just barely. A nice refinement to some orbital diffusion of 2013 SY99. Thousands of years in orbit, slightly red in color, coming in for its close approach to the sun this century, and almost there now, in fact just a little more than a decade to go before crossing the equatorial plane. The detection of many objects like this is why we believe there could be hundreds to thousands of dwarf planets in our solar system, but if they're in their far point in their orbit, how would we even see them? Up next, cool triple crater analysis on Mars, reading their meteor breakup into three pieces explanation does feel slightly silly, but hey, any chance to show some of those straight lines nature just loves putting everywhere. Last link is to the March U.S. climate report, mean, max, and min temperature, plus the precipitation. Much more at the link you guys have in the list. If you are coming to Observing the Frontier this weekend, breakfast and check-in starts at 7 a.m. tomorrow. The full schedule can be found by clicking there. We'll promptly start the conference just before 9. Remember that over at QuakeWatch.net, our two newest papers are published in the top right corner, the 2017 ones, and be sure to check out the links for today's video as the USGS decided to lava Molotov cocktail over the wall and reignite the battle between us. That would be the open letter in response in your link list today. We've got pressure and radar forecasts, a run up through the atmosphere, and shots of our star to close. It's 4.55 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.